Good day everybody, and welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest Math Lessons. In today's lessons, we are going to be going over the basic properties of numbers for grades 1 and 2. Now, when it comes to numbers, there are four basic properties that we can look at to understand how numbers work. We have the commutative property, the identity property, the associative property, and the distributive property. These basic properties are normally applied with addition and multiplication when it comes to numbers. So let's go over them. For the, for the commutative property, in addition, the sum of the numbers is the same regardless of, it, of its orders. So, for example, if we have 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1, these will both give us the same answer. It doesn't, num doesn't matter which number comes first, what number you're adding before the next, you're always going to get the sum, and in this case, you're going to get 3 for both of them. The next identity property, in addition, says that adding any number to 0 is equal to the number itself. So, you know, kind of self-explanatory, if we were to add 0 to 7, we're going to get 7, or 0 to 15, we'll get 15 as well. For our next property, it will be the associative property. And in addition, this means that the sum of two or more numbers is always the same regardless of the way you group them. So, for example, if you have 1 plus 2 plus 4, we can add 1 and 2 first, which will give us 3, and then we can add 4 to it, and which will give us 7. Or, if we wanted to, we could go add the 2 and 4 first, which will then give us 6, and then we can add the 1 to the 6, which also will give us 7. And our last and final property is the distributive property. This property involves multiplication and addition. So for example, if two brackets, 3 plus 5, you will learn that sometime in the future that brackets in math means multiplication. So we can use the distributive property to expand the statement into 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5, which if you were to add this up with multiplication will give you 16. So let's get into some examples to better understand what these properties work in, uh, in app and questions. So question one states, the numbers 34 and 142 have the same sum of their digits, 3 plus 4 equaling 7, and 1 plus 4 plus 2 also equaling 7. What is the first number greater than 2007 such that the sum of its digits is the same as the sum of the digits of 2007? Will it be A, 2016, B, 2115, C, 2008, D, 7002, or E, 2070? And you can pause the video and try to solve the question for yourself first, and then we can check it out afterwards. All right, hopefully you've got an answer, and let's see if you uh, got it correctly. So, the first thing we're going to want to do with this question is to first figure out what the sum of the digits of 2007 are. That way we know what we can compare the other numbers with. So, we can do this simply by going 2 plus 0 plus 0 plus 7, giving us 9. And so now that we know that we are looking for... Uh, the digits to add up to 9, we can just start going one by one with each one. So we can first start with A of 2016, so 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 6, giving us 9. So we know that this might be one of the answers. And then we will move on to B, and we have 2,115, so we can go 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 5, giving us 9 as well. And moving on with C, having 2,008, we can go 2 plus 0, plus 0, plus 8, giving us 10. And then with D, we have 7,002, so this will be 7, plus 0, plus 0, plus 2, giving us 9. And then we have our final one, uh, E, 2070, of 2, plus 0, plus 7, plus 0, giving us 9 as well. Now, we know that we are looking for... Uh, a, a value that has that its digits equal up to the same as 2007, which is 9. So we know we can cross off C as our answer because it gave us a sum of 10, which is not what we're looking for. And now we can simply order up our remaining numbers, which are 2016, 2070, 2115, and 7002. 
And, as the question states, we want to find the first number greater than 2007, where the sum of its digits is the same as the sum of the digits of 2007. So, because we know that these four have the same sum, we just have to look for which number comes first after 2007. And this will be A, 2016. All right, on to question two. So question two states that Peter wrote a one digit number and then wrote an additional digit to its right. He added 19 to the obtained number and got 72. What number did Peter write first? Was it A, two, B, five, C, six, D, seven, or E? nine. And you can pause the video and try to work out an answer for yourself first. All right, let's check it out and see if you figured out the answer. So with this question, what we're going to be doing is we're going to kind of follow what Peter did and have some, when we're kind of unsure in the specifics, we're going to kind of have empty templates so we can fill it in later once we figured out what these numbers are. So as it states, Peter wrote down a one digit number down. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an empty box here, which will represent this one digit number that Peter wrote down. And even though we don't know what that digit may be, we can just use this as a representation of that. Then he wrote an additional digit to its right. So he added a second digit to the next of it. So we're going to have a second box here to represent that second digit. Then he added 19 to the, to the obtained number and got 72. So we know that he added this sum number down here, he added 19 to it, and it gave him 72. So if we want to figure out how to get this number here, well, we know that he took whatever this number was and added 19 to it, and it gave him 72. Now we know that subtraction is the opposite to addition. So we could take this 72 and subtract it by this known number 19, and it will give us the number that he initially wrote down first. So if we go 72 minus 19, it'll give us 53. Now, the question asks, what p number did Peter write first? So when it came to 53, we know that he added a digit to its right. So we know that this five must be first, and then the digit to its right is three. So because we want to know what number Peter wrote down first, it will be this number right here. And therefore, our answer will be B, five. All right, question three states that Bill has as many brothers as sisters. His sister Anne has twice as many brothers as she has sisters. How many children are there in this family? And again, you can pause the video and try to figure out the solution for yourself first. All right, well, let's check to see if you got the right answer. So for this question, we're going to need to be looking for a situation where both these two statements, Bill has as many brothers as sisters, and that his sister Anne has twice as many brothers as she has sisters, these two statements have to be true. And then from when we realize that this situ those two statements are true, we can then realize how many children are in that in this family and we can get our answer from there. So let's work through and check some situations. So as we have Bill right here, Let's work with the one situation where, what if Bill had one brother? Well, because we want this first statement to be true, that Bill has as many brothers as sisters, we'll know that if Bill has one brother, he must have one sister. And the sister must be Anne, because Anne is part of his family. So, now if we look at, so there we go, our first statement holds true. But then we can look at our second statement. His sister Anne has twice as many brothers as she, she has sisters. Now, Anne, doesn't have any sisters in this situation. And if that's the case, she can't have twice as many brothers because she would need to have zero plus zero to get one, and that just won't work. So in this situation, this can't be the correct order of brothers and sisters. So let's try again. What if Bill had two brothers? Well, if Bill has two brothers, he'll have two sisters. So then that's how we get to make sure that this first statement is true. Now, on to the second. Does Anne have twice as many brothers as she has sisters? Well, she has one sister, and then there's the two brothers over here. Now, we got to make sure that we include Bill as part of the brothers as well, because Anne, are, Anne and Bill are brothers and sisters. So in this case, we have one sister and three brothers. So this is not a correct situation because we have 
No, because we because Anne doesn't have twice as many brothers as she has sisters. So, what if Bill has three brothers? Well, if Bill has three brothers, if we want our first statement to be true, then he must have three sisters. So in this situation, Anne has two sisters. And how many brothers will Anne have? Well, she'll have four brothers. So, in this case, Anne will then have twice as many brothers as sisters. And then we can count how many children are in this family. And this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, from this, these two statements are true. And we know how many children will be in this family because these two statements hold true. And that will be B, E, seven. All right, on to question four. A palindrome is a number which remains the same when its digits are written in reverse order. So, for example, 1331, if you were to write it backwards, would be 1331. So this would be a palindrome. A car's odometer reads 15,951. Find the least number of kilometers the car should travel for the next palindrome to appear on the odometer. Will it be A, 100? B, 110, C, 710, D, 900, or E, 1010. And again, you can pause the video and attempt the question for yourself first, and then we can check it after. All right, hopefully you have the right answer. Let's check it out. All right, so with this question, we're going to start with our number. 15,951, and we're going to showcase some important aspects to palindromes that'll help us out here in figuring this question out. So since the numbers must be written the same if we started backwards, we know three things from this. The first being that our first and last digit must be the same. In this case, they are both one. And secondly, we know that the second and fourth digit must also be the same. In this case, they are both five. And third, that our middle digit can be any number we want since we have a fifth five digit number and there's and it's right in the middle so whatever it is it will be the same regardless of which way we write it so this number has a lot of freedom in what it can be now we know we can't have a palindrome that first digits start with 15 because if we did it would lock the fourth and final digit position being five and one in this case for the fourth and fifth digit respectively now, we know we can't have 15 because our middle digit 9 is at the highest it can be. And if we want a number that is greater than this one, we have to keep going higher. So because of this, we know we can't have another 15 number. So we know that we must start with a 16. And because we want to have the next available number, we have to have our middle digit, which has the most freedom in this case, to be as low as possible. So. 0 is the lowest number possible, and that must, must be what our middle digit is. So, since we know the first and second and third digits, we can figure out our fourth and fifth digits, this being a 6 for the fourth and a 1 for the fifth. So, this our next earliest available palindrome for us will be 16,061. Now, since the question is asking us the least number of kilometers to reach the next palindrome, we can simply take our new palindrome and subtract it from the original palindrome to find the difference between the two. So we can simply go 16,061 minus 15,951, and it'll give us 110. And also with this, we now have our answer, which is B, 110. And this will conclude our lessons for the day. Thank you for your attention during our lesson. If you are in need of extra information, you can check the Math Kangaroo website, mathkangaroo.ca, or you can send an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com with your questions. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful day.